Imagine if we could design tourism experiences that allowed visitors to walk on the moon, climb to the top of Mount Everest, or travel back in time to visit medieval London. All of this is possible with the brave new world of virtual reality, or VR for short. Let's take a look at how the tourism industry might use this new technology. First, and perhaps most obvious, is the use of VR for promoting tourism destinations and experiences. Here's an example from Brisbane's Next Hotel. Um, we use uh, virtual reality goggles and take them on the road with us when we're showcasing the hotel to our, our customers. Uh, it gives people a real buzz. There's not very many people that are doing it uh, very well, uh, and, and, and ours is great. It, uh, some people, I've, I've heard stories, uh, get quite disorientated by it, and I, th I think part of, part of the clip actually brings you to the edge of our, our pool terrace, and, and some people get a little bit of vertigo uh, while they're looking over the edge. Marriott Hotels have used a slightly different approach. In 2014, they created teleporter booths that were placed in public spaces and transported users to exotic places like Hawaii. The booths used Oculus Rift headsets, wireless headphones, and a range of 4D sensory elements including heat, wind, scent, and moving floors. Marriott followed this with the launch of their Vroom service, um, which allowed guests to borrow a VR device to experience VR postcards in their room. These VR postcards offered immersive stories where guests could visit Chile, Rwanda or Beijing. When virtual reality first came out, there was the, the fundamental kind of idea that is VR, is VR going to change the way in which we travel? Are people going to want to travel if, if they've got VR? And I think the fundamental answer to that is yes, people are still going to want to travel. But it's how we then integrate the virtual experience of travel with the actual experience that people went, get when they, they arrive in a destination. And we're seeing greater experimentation around that as well. So, for example, Marriott have just had um, a test where they positioned a 4D virtual reality experience outside the registry offices in, in New York. And so people were able to come out and go straight on honeymoon as a surprise. So again, that kind of thing, it's really interesting. But how can we embed that into destination marketing? How can we embed that into the experiences that people have, say, when they're in the destination, whether it be in theme parks or whether it be even in hotels, etc. So how can we do that? And there's a lot of opportunity there. These comments and examples really highlight the fact that VR is more than just a promotional tool. The technology also offers many opportunities for entertainment and interpretation in a range of tourism settings. In museums, there's enormous potential to recreate historic settings or events to allow visitors to experience another time or place. In theme parks, the focus is more on creating immersive rides or experiences for entertainment. Airlines are also starting to use VR entertainment for in-flight entertainment. VR can also provide visitors with accessibility to an environment that they may not be able to visit, either because the environment is, is no longer there or because it's too fragile, too dangerous or too costly to visit. The same technology could also be used by people with disabilities or those who don't have the ability or expertise to visit particular environments such as the Great Barrier Reef or Antarctica. A final, less obvious application involves the use of VR for planning and development. The ability to visualise spatial environments allows tourism planners, policy makers and other stakeholders to explore tourist environments and proposals before they're built. Regardless of these four applications, our research here at the University of Queensland has demonstrated that presence is a key element in successful VR experiences. Simply put, Presence is whether we have mentally disengaged from the real world and become immersed in the virtual environment. Our research indicates that there are three dimensions to presence. The first is physical space, which refers to how the user is able to interact with the virtual space using their body. We can enhance physical presence by allowing the user to control elements in the virtual space through body movements. The second dimension is about involvement, which is the mental state of focusing your attention on a particular event or activity. Although VR is primarily a visual experience, other sensory stimuli such as sound, smell and movement can help to make a person feel more involved, as we saw in the example of the Marriott Hotel's teleporter. A good story or narrative can also increase involvement. The third dimension is realness, which is about ensuring that the content and activities in the virtual space are believable, lifelike and natural. 
Realness has to do with the consistency and continuity of the visual content, the textures, the resolution, the light sources, the field of view, and the sense of perspective. Now this all sounds great in theory, but there are some challenges. The main challenge of VR is that it disengages users from the real world. This can lead to antisocial behaviours, as well as safety issues in some tourist settings like aircraft cabins. For some people, even small periods of time in a VR environment can result in vertigo or simulator sickness, an unpleasant sensation similar to motion sickness. While VR offers exciting possibilities in certain settings, there is much greater potential to use augmented reality or AR in tourism. So what's the difference between AR and VR? Well, VR replaces the real world with simulated or specially recorded 360 degree content while augmented reality, or AR, is a live view of the real world overlaid with digital content. The two systems use different technologies. It won't be long before we have smart glasses that are pretty much unnoticeable. They're likely to have a tiny display in the lenses, and the electronics and battery will be neatly concealed in the frame. They'd be operated easily with a fairly inconspicuous hand movement, eye movements, or voice commands. Today, many companies are developing prototypes for smart glasses, smart contact lenses, and even smart mirrors and smart windows for use in buildings and driverless cars. The potential to augment our world with real-time, hands-free information, communication, and entertainment is almost limitless. So how might the tourism industry use this technology? The first and perhaps most obvious tourism application is navigation. If we can render views of the real world with virtual information, then it's easy to see how AR might provide us with travel directions, warnings, and safety information. In museums and art galleries, AR is already being used to bring static displays to life. But imagine summoning interpretive content or virtual tour guides who can tell us about the history of specific buildings, statues, or landmarks as we explore a city. Imagine using AR to see historical photos superimposed on a real scene, or meeting historical figures who can tell you their stories. Now imagine all of this content translated into your own native language, regardless of where you are on the planet. Using AR apps, your smartphone can already scan signs or menus and translate them in real time into your chosen language. Like VR, AR also provides many opportunities for promotion, but AR makes it possible to tailor marketing information to individual preferences in real time at the destination. Several travel companies have experimented with AR features that allow users to see review scores, hotel vacancies, and other information about the businesses around them. AR information can be personalised based on your interests and preferences, it can also be used by the industry to make your experience more personal. Imagine arriving at your hotel and being greeted like an old friend by staff who know your name. This is entirely possible because the greeter is wearing smart glasses that recognise you and can confirm your identity. Communication is another application of AR. Imagine the ability to bring virtual avatars or holograms of people in your social networks into our travel spaces in real time. This kind of technology would provide new ways to share travel experiences with friends and family back home. There is enormous potential for destinations to use AR to gamify the travel experience. Imagine a real life adventure in which travelers carry out missions and compete against other teams while visiting the key tourist locations in a city. We can already see some of these ideas in games like Ingress and Pokemon Go but there is real potential to design games that are more focused on exploring destinations and attractions. This is very new technology. We're not sure yet how it'll be embraced by consumers and how the tourism industry will use AR and VR. What we do know is that rapid advances in these technologies offer exciting new opportunities for enhancing the travel experience.